So recently I've had a goal, which is to evangelize more. Um, I tend to talk to other Christians about Jesus, but I don't actually talk to people who don't know Jesus. I don't tend to tell them about who Jesus is and how much I love them. So I've been on this journey of trying to understand how could I do that better? And I realized part of it is I don't really feel like I have enough language and I didn't have maybe um, a different kind of perspective or insight uh, so that I could tell them who Jesus is and not just kind of the, the roteness maybe of what I've done in the past. So the verse that I picked was John 14, six, which is, you'll be very familiar with it. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So I thought that'd be a really great verse to unpack and realize what is Jesus actually saying? What does he mean when he said this verse? I think in the past we've used this verse to say, if you don't go through Jesus, you can't go to heaven in just kind of this simplistic way. And I think there's much more there. And I think there's something even more inviting than, um, than I realized. So uh, thank you to Lana who suggested doing homiletics. It was so helpful to me because as I wrote down all of John 14 and went through the process, when I zoomed out, it became so clear how much Jesus loved his disciples. Um, I could just see that he was preparing them, that he was gonna leave, maybe even a little worried about them because he knew he was leaving and wanted to make sure they truly understood how to get to the, to the Lord um, while he was gone. So once I looked at this verse through that lens that Jesus really loved them, it changed how I, um, what I saw in it. So let me read a little bit to you about John 14, because I want you to get a feel of Jesus and maybe uh, his perspective as I read this. So this is Jesus talking. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If not, I would have told you. I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come back, come again, and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also, you know the way where I am going. Lord, Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Lord, said Philip, so this is like a different apostle now, right? Lord, show us the Father and that's enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been among you all this time and you do not know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. So that's all I'll read, but I think if you picture Jesus, maybe even just sitting down casually talking to his apostles, he really wants them to understand. I don't think it's a condemnation. I think he's just like, you really need to get this because it's of the utmost importance. Um, so let's kind of unpack this, the I am the way and the truth and the life. So if we think about I am the way, when I look that up, it says that it's like a path. It's, it's the road to the Lord. Um, we know that you have to know Jesus to know the Lord. And so that is the truth about this scripture that I am the way. But I also believe that the Jesus is inviting you on a journey. So if you picture this path, this way to the Lord, he wants to join you on it. He's not just saying go and, and I hope that works out for you. He literally is walking beside you, holding your hand and showing you the way and how to get closer to the Lord and how to have a more intimate relationship with the Lord, which in essence is a more intimate relationship with Jesus. And so I think it's so sweet that when he says, I am the way, he's inviting you to this intimacy with him. Come with me and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go with you down the road to the path that leads to the Lord. 
So the second thing he says is, I am the truth. So the truth we know is that Jesus is the son of the most high God. He died for us. He was resurrected. And it's through Jesus and his sacrifice that we are forgiven from our sins and that we have eternal life. But I also think that the truth um, exposes Right, so if you are um, with somebody that's holy or somebody that's super honest, there's a way that being in the presence of God um, is going to expose things in you that you are that maybe are not right with God that you are uncomfortable with. Right, you can't go into God's presence and and just start lying through there. So an example of this would be I had a Christmas that was super super hard. I was under tremendous spiritual warfare. And there was a particular person that was causing it. And I was really under um, great pain, just some crazy things I never could imagine have happened. And even at night, I was up in the middle of the night warring. Um, there was actually a storm and I felt like I had to claim Psalms 18, 18, that the Lord will rescue you in a storm. So I was just begging God to come and rescue me. I could tell from something that was too strong for me. And so this kind of demonic thing or whatever broke in my house. And the next day, everything was just fine. So that's, a, you know, a good thing. But I realized I had, I had so much resentment because of what had happened around Christmas. Um, I had developed this like self-righteous kind of, um, you know, this righteous pride. So I was walking around in pride that this is what you did to me and I had to work to fix it and it's not fair. And so it wasn't necessarily that I was in the wrong in this particular situation, but because of that, I had risen to this pridefulness. So I remember it was probably about a month later in January, I was at some kind of Christian concert where they had multiple people come out and I'm sitting down there, a couple people had um, led some songs, but Jeremy Camp comes out with the word, with truth. And as he read, I'm getting the chills, whatever scripture he had, um, when he read that scripture over me, I immediately was convicted of the pride in my life and confessed, Lord, oh, I'm so sorry, I have been self-righteous. And I gave that to the Lord and I cried because it was so strong in me. But the the beauty of that is that the lord um because of his truth right i was confronted with truth and then i um, had to act on that I had to make a decision on that but it's because the lord wanted to realign me i may have been on the path or the way but then ultimately um buddy can you oh sorry the dog um so I was on the path, and because of the truth, then the Lord had to realign me. Can you get him, please? Or take him outside. Sorry. Um, because I was confronted with this truth, then um, in God's beautiful, the, because he loves me, right? He didn't just condemn me and tell me what an awful person I was. He was convicting me so that he could realign me into his will. And so it's a gracious thing, even though it can be a very hard thing. So I was thinking, well, are there examples of that in the Bible? And I thought about the woman at the well, where he lovingly says, you know, it, you have had a bunch of husbands and the one you live with is not even your husband. So right, she if she has exposure to Jesus, then the truth was just present and he speaks the truth over her. And again, not in a condemning way, but he's saying, I know who you are. Let's don't pretend, right? Um, and another example would be the woman caught in adultery. So as this woman who is probably the worst day of her life and she gets you know, uh, around these men in the synagogue as they are exposing her, it becomes very clear that Jesus ends up exposing the trap that they have laid for him and for her. So, you know, he says, whoever is without sin can cast the first stone. And yet these men just started slowly walking away, right? Because Jesus is truth. And when you are in the presence of truth, you are going to feel this type of exposure um, and again, he wants to correct you so that he can align you into his will and what he's doing. So the, the next part is I am the life. 
when I got to this part, I got a little stuck. I wasn't like, I wasn't sure, like it wasn't coming to me. What, it, what do you really mean, Jesus, in this context when you say, I am the life? So uh, Bundy and I had had some problems and disagreements and he was just in a bad place, kind of depressed and sad. We had left the house. We were trying to work through it, talk about it. Um, I was kind of praying over him. Nothing was helping, right? He's 13. Nothing was helping. We weren't getting anywhere. So I let him stay in his room by himself and let him be alone. And I just remember coming down to my kitchen here and deciding to take communion kind of for him or over him. And um, as I picked up my communion, which, you know, I just use chips or whatever I have, I said, Jesus, you are the bread of life. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I, I was like, where is that in the Bible? It's in John, right? Of course, he's so, John is so consistent saying that Jesus is the bread of life. And so I took communion and I knew what I needed to pray over Bundy was life. So I was trying to help him with his depression and the sadness and work through your emotions and all those things. But ultimately what Bundy needed was life. He needed the, the life of Jesus to just um, speak over him all the goodness and the joy and the love and everything that Jesus offers us is life. And I believe that as we walk this path and as we are confronted with truth and it realigns us, this is where we find true life. It's with a relationship with Jesus. And this relationship with Jesus is how we stay in alignment so that we can be fully alive in Jesus, right? The person we were created to be, the path, the destiny, everything that we have, I believe that that's the life he wants to offer us. It is a relationship with the Lord, it's relationship with the Holy Spirit, but it's also us becoming who we were intended to be, that we could be on earth and have life. So I I believe if we go back to the, the evangelizing, um, I think we've used this scripture, um, I am the truth and the life, the way, the truth, the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, in a negative aspect, but I think there's the rest of the story. I think the other part of that is offering people to say, not only do you get saved from your sins, but you will literally have life abundantly. You, Jesus is gonna show you the way, He's going to show you what's true, and then he's also going to bring you to full life. So I just want to encourage you that you have that opportunity, obviously, to walk with Jesus and experience that fullness of life. But I think that's also something that should be um, said more often to those that we are trying to tell about Jesus is this fullness of life that Jesus offers. And it's because he offers us this beautiful gift of intimacy with him. And it is this journey. We don't just get there and now we're fully alive. We have moments of that. But I believe this gift of intimacy with the Lord and how it all works so perfectly together is really the gift that is Jesus.